hello hello today is my birthday hi happy birthday me it is also the day that we fly to malaysia for three weeks i was going to vlog the entire process of of packing do the whole like oh what do we take on the plane but it's been it's been a lot uh, many so that didn't happen um we are pretty much packed though which is good because the taxi is coming in about 20 minutes and i've come to the terrifying realization that uh i think our taxi has just arrived The end of 20 hours of traveling. Uh, we are in our Malaysian flat. Woo. Yay. Rupert has not yet been reacquainted with his favorite, the big bear, because unfortunately he fell asleep in the car despite our many, many attempts to keep him awake. Very fair. Very fair child. Completely passed out. He only slept for six hours on the plane as his nighttime sleep, whereas normally he sleeps for about 12 hours a night. So quite a difference there. Um, and he's also developed a bit of a fever, which could just be because it's very hot. And that's a big difference. Um, and he also has a runny nose. So I think he's just very run down or being on the plane just brought out something in him that he's not feeling great so we just transferred him into our bed um which we don't normally do he doesn't normally like to share a bed none of our family we're not really a bed sharing family also in case he is ill it's probably best to have him be on the bed in between us since he was not even awake for us getting into the flat. So <laughs> probably wake up like, what on earth? Where am I? Though he did break up momentarily and I told him that we were in mummy and mama's room in Malaysia and he said, oh, not my bedroom. My bedroom's over there from when I was a baby. He's like, Yes, and pointed exactly to where he had slept. All in all, a very good journey. We're doing well. Now we just have to hold it together to actually sleep and get through this jet lag. We can do it. Go us. Can't believe. Did you just take a shower? I think you've had the energy. Oh. Oh, hello. It's me from the future. Here to tell you all about the wonder that is Surfshark. 
Now, I know you've heard me talk about Surfshark before. You heard me talk about Surfshark before we actually came to Malaysia. I talk about Surfshark a lot, but this time, this time, I need to talk about Surfshark in a very special way. Because when we first arrived in Malaysia, Rupert was not doing great. He was not feeling amazing. And all he wanted to do for four days, really, was watch Frozen. Normally, very, very small amount of uh, screen time for our show. I have a Disney Plus account. Absolutely, let's sign in. I realized I could not get into my Disney Plus account. It was going to be a panic, but it was fine because I immediately called on my trusty VPN, Surfshark, and get your own virtual private network where you're securely protected and you can watch anything you like. Being able to change your digital location around the world Ooh. to one of their many, many servers and you can use one account and an unlimited number of devices. <laughs> All you have to do is enter coupon code JESSICA for three months extra for free. Just go to surfshark.deal slash Jessica. Click the link in the description down below or you can scan this beautiful QR code right here next to me. Bit of that like hashtag mom boss aesthetic. Hello, lovely people, and welcome to Malaysia. Yay! Yay! We made it. This is Malaysia in sign, which I think is great. I don't know why that is Malaysia. dance. Oh. Oh, we did see some uh, dragon dance, but that was more like Chinese, wasn't it? That was. Yeah. We can also insert that now, too. We can. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're in Malaysia again because we come to Malaysia every year to celebrate a Chinese New Year with Claudia's family. Or now, as it should be correctly named, Lunar New Year. Because it's not just the Chinese that celebrate it. No. But your family are Chinese. But yeah, I mean, we call it Chinese New Year because we are Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> um, if those of you who don't know, I'm half Chinese Malaysian, being that my mum is ethnically Chinese, but uh, nationally Malaysian, uh, like, has been here. I think, like, her gran great-grandfather came over here from China. So there's a lot of um, Chinese... Um, people in Malaysia who are Chinese Malaysian and the other half of me is English. <laughs> <laughs> but not because we did a DNA test, well, yeah, remember? That's true, we did. It's actually only a quarter of you. I know if you want to find out ethnic wait, sorry. <laughs> watch the video. If you want to find out more about that, press on this. Is that even the thing where you press on the thing on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You click on the link. Yeah. Out there, it's a card. Yeah, I was far, far more interesting than Jessica, but that was, you know, a given, saying that I'm more obviously mixed race. Hey, I am also half English. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. This video is about um, Chinese New Year, we're going to go with that one, and um, how we've come to Malaysia to celebrate. And we're going to go through um, our sort of traditional customs. Yeah, Chinese New Year isn't specifically religious, it's more a traditional custom, that's true. you could say. Yes, yeah, But a... there are lots of things about it that follow that pattern of religion yeah i think in the same sense of christmas, like christmas being like based in paganism that no one a lot of things like are ba pagan and a lot of them are obviously christian and it's kind of like a blend but also if you're like not of any faith you still true. sometimes will celebrate it and bring a yeah. tree into your house and things like that um, i think chinese new year is a little bit similar because my family are christian most of not them all of not them. all of them but most of them but they will still be very happy to go with some of the chinese traditions yes. that are based more on obviously ancient chinese culture and ancient chinese religion but some of them do celebrate ancient chinese culture and therefore have to do the things like on chinese new year's day where you can't wash your hair or buy a book yeah but we'll talk about that later <laughs> one thing that people do say to us though whenever we're traveling to malaysia uh, particularly on Instagram DMs, um, is why we would choose to travel to Malaysia as an LGBTQ plus couple, why we would promote Malaysia when it's not somewhere that being LGBTQ plus is... Celebrated. Celebrated, yeah. Uh, technically, it's legal to be gay in Malaysia. 
And obviously when we're traveling here, we have a different experience to locals who live here because we are foreigners. Um, even though you have ties to the country, we have a very different experience. But for us, like, Claudia can't, can't stop being Malaysian just because you're gay. And it's important for Rupert, who this is still very much a part of, this is his heritage, this is his culture, this is his family, and they can't afford to travel to the UK to come and to see him. Yeah. So we bring him here so that he can experience his culture, his traditions, his people. Like Jessica says, we come to Malaysia, she says every year, like, I think it's been like two, this is the second <laughs> year in a row. You have been twice before, but it wasn't, it wasn't every no, year. There was a pandemic. Yeah. This is my fourth time here. Yeah, okay, yeah. But um, if you want to check out videos from last year, where we also talk about traveling with a toddler and what it's like to be gay in, in Asia and things like that, then check them out. Yeah. <laughs> in the card above or linked in the description <laughs> below. Yeah. You can tell she's the professional at this. I'm just the sidekick that comes along with like shits and giggles. <laughs> so Chinese New Year falls fell on the 10th of February this year. Um, and it's basically, as it's called from Lunar New Year, it's based on the moon cycles. So uh, the first day is on the on, on a new moon, um, and then you follow the year follows the moon cycles all the way around. So it's not the same as the calendar year. So it changes the date rather than being the first of January every year. It changes depending on the moon cycle. So this year was the tenth of February. Last year was like the, a day in January. It was sometime <laughs> in January, and next year is like the twenty, like the end of January. So it it, it kind of varies a little bit like Easter because Easter seems yes. to change, doesn't it? Seems that it does. It does change, yeah. Lunar New Year um, and the Moon Cycle also follows the Chinese zodiac, which gives us a new animal every twelve years, mm -hmm. which is super exciting because this is my year. I don't know if that is super exciting. No, it's not actually really because exciting. I read that when it basically when it's your Chinese zodiac animal, mm -hmm. you're confronted with the bending something bending the bending energy, where it's not great basically mm -hmm. and um i think it's like a disharmony there's like there's no heart there's, there's like it's not harmonious no it's a disharmonious yes so i'm a rabbit so my year was last year because the rabbit mm. is the fourth animal in the chinese zodiac and the dragon is the fifth i was born in 87 and jessica was born just at the end of the dragon era in 89 yeah. because of the way we said january 25th so that year the chinese new year obviously fell later it felt after my birthday. Yeah. So even though I was born in the year of the snake, I was born before the year changed. So I'm a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Generally, a dragon year is considered actually a really popular, auspicious year because it's a dragon. And it's the only animal in the Chinese zodiac that is not a real animal, which is so fun to explain mm -hmm. to Rupert. So most people know about the Chinese zodiac having 12 animals, one for each year, and then they repeat. Um, and it's all based on that ancient folk tale of a race that the emperor sets of the best 12 animals who win will be named a zodiac animal. And each animal also has a heavenly stem and an earthly branch. So the heavenly stems are like more star related sort of energy things I think there's like five of them and then there's um earthly branches are the elements so wood fire earth and water so this year is the year of the wood dragon so depending what the elements represent whether it's yin energy or yang energy can determine how um and what animal sign they are, determines how that year is going to play out with them. So the year, being a wood dragon, the yang year, interacts with the individual who is themselves born from, for my instance, myself, a yin rabbit fire year. And that is how the Chinese horoscopes are based. So looking that up into great detail, um, I can tell you what Jessica's year is going to look like and apparently what my year is going to look at. This is based from the CNN travel horoscope guide um, from Hong Kong. So, you know, I mean, they probably know what they're talking about. So one overall arching um, sort of prediction, which is quite interesting, which I never knew about, is how the elements can play into each other. So because this year is a wood year, anything that is wood based in industries like publishing, 
um, I'm trying to think of anything else, wood, wood carving, carpentry, um, anything that's like obviously based from wood is going to be a good year. So, you know, Jessica, start writing that book. But any year, but earth, which is the opposite, which is apparently the, the sort of opposite to wood, um, is not good. So earth would represent industries such as um, construction, building, uh, mining, anything like that. So property development. So not a good year to potentially invest in property or potentially even like buy your own house. Who knows? I think it's more to do with building though and, and how it's based. So it's probably to do with more like industry based. So you, you probably can still buy your own house. Don't listen to me. I'm not a, I'm not a Chinese horoscope person, but I thought that was still interesting. So the dragon is a very auspicious um, Chinese zodiac creature. It's the only mythical one as such, with the others all being existing animals. Um, so it's considered a very popular Chinese zodiac sign. And the year of the dragon is considered a very prosperous, um, good year. Unless, of course, you are a dragon, which is interesting, because apparently if it's your own year, it's, there's a thing every 12 years we all have to face our own Ben Ming Nian, which basically is like, who knows what that is, some energy. But basically it means that when you're when it's your own zodiac animal year, it's not usually the best, unfortunately. So mine is just finished. Mine was the year of the rabbit, which was 2023. So go me, pat on the back, I made it through. Jessica, unfortunately, is now entering her Ben Min bad year. So apparently she should expect lots of disruptions, and it should be a bit of a rocky road, not great with work, not great with relationships, which kind of sucks for me too. And um, yeah, she's been told that she should just keep a low profile, stay humble. The higher she tries to aim, the harder the like bad stuff's gonna hit her. So she should just stay kind of low profile, keep it cool, save money, don't spend money, don't buy anything expensive, don't like go mining or like, Try and get into property development suddenly. Like, you know, maybe write a book. That might be good. But yeah, that's basically what she's got to do. But it does say that don't worry. One good thing, like a birth or a marriage or hang out with friends or doing something fun can offset three bad things. So we're going to try and inject loads of fun, positive things into Jessica's year. Um, maybe a baby would be good because actually that ties in nicely with my rabbit. Apparently the rabbit is going to be a good year for me. Um, because I'm a yin energy, but the yin, but the dragon is more of a yang energy. Apparently the two will combine to create like quite a fruitful year. And I have been recommended that if I want to have a baby, I should have one this year. So, you know, hopefully the Chinese horoscopes will grant us such luck. So one of the first traditions of Chinese New Year is having a reunion family dinner, um, which is so really like lovely, lovely, lovely. Lovely, lovely presented in, Je in, in Rupert's book. Where is it? Oh my goodness. On this one. Get the book. I love Chinese New Year. And I think you talk about this in more detail in one of your other videos recently. So my last video, all about the best books uh, to share with your toddler, the inclusive books of Chinese New Year. This book was included. Um, and it's one that really, I think, has a lovely way of talking about the reunion dinner, everyone coming back with family gathering together and then also talks a little bit about the great race and the animals of the mm. Chinese zodiac and um, we always have reunion dinner at Aunt Lang's house. Yeah so for those who don't know because that's what I was getting into <laughs> was reunion dinner is just a dinner that you have usually with your close family um, the night before Chinese New Year's Day so it's like a um, Chinese a, New Year's a, Eve. Yeah a Chinese New Year's Eve meal and there's certain things that you're meant to eat traditionally. So for instance, you have a whole chicken, including the head, that marks um, togetherness and the wholeness. You can eat fish for lots of good luck. Yeah. There's often um, like tangerine, like, are they tangerine or mandarins, like oranges, which are just to do with like- It's supposed to have eight of them. Yeah, I think they're just meant to be lucky. I mean, they all have reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, long noodles. The longer the noodle, the better for yeah. long life. Yeah. I basically you win if you get the longest noodle. <laughs> Dumb. Which is the extra special blessings. No oh, extra special blessings. Indeed. I don't really know what your blessing is. Well, it's just extra special. I'm pretty sure it's because dumplings also look a bit like money bags. <laughs>
Um, there's also something called Nangao, which is like a, it's like a sticky rice cake. It's like brown. It's very solid. You have to basically fry it, I think, to make it soft. It's like a sugary, sticky. We didn't actually have it this year, so I don't know. know. So key superstitions that you need to follow on Chinese New Year's. Very important, according to Uncle Kenny. Which and we were stricter like, about with each other this year because we want to have yeah. good luck. Seeing it's a dragon we year, need good luck. she's not getting a good year. Last no. year we didn't follow them and we had a bad year. Yeah. It's we, different weather. We were unaware um, of how incredibly true it is that you, know, you will have a bad luck year um, on, your, on your year. Yes. And the rabbit year, it really came true. Someone very positive, I think my aunt very positively said, well, at least your years are next to each other. So you just have like two bad years every 12 years. So it's like 10 good years. <laughs> 10 good years. Like, like, oh, but yeah, so the tradition, the things you have to follow to make sure you, you know, to try and encourage your yeah. year to be as good as possible is you can't wash your hair. Mm-hmm. Do not wash your hair because you're washing away your luck. Yeah, because the idea is that you wake up on New Year's Day and you're blessed with luck. So if you do anything to disrupt that luck within that first 24 hours, you're doomed. Yes. So you can't cut or wash your hair. You can't use scissors because mm-hmm. it's cutting something. It's like put it clashing two blades yeah, together. Oh, yeah, clashing two blades together. You can take the rubbish out. You're taking out your luck. Yeah, I can't take the rubbish out. We didn't do that yesterday, actually. We didn't ask for our room Very to be. Good. Yeah, and we told the hotel yeah. not to change our room. Well done, us. Yeah. Don't buy shoes. Yeah, don't buy shoes because shoes sounds like... A sign. A sigh, ah, and you have a lot of stress that year. Don't wear black or white because mm, that's traditionally funeral garb. Yeah, I mean, that's a fair enough one. Mm-hmm. If you wear red, though, that is a very lucky colour. Extra luck, extra luck. Yeah. Don't eat congee, which is like a rice porridge because you'll be poor. <gasps> you ate congee! Wait, no, I didn't! You did! No, I didn't! Yesterday morning! But yesterday morning was not trying to be as dangerous. Oh yeah, that's okay. Okay, it's okay. <gasps> don't worry. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Oh yeah, you can't do anything with the number four because four sounds like death. Mm, absolutely not. And then they don't even have the number four here in buildings. So if you go in the elevator, in the lift, in the lift, it's just one, two, three, three A, five. Yeah, you've become helpful. You've become a little bit learning counting. Yeah, our language becomes a bit Americanized sometimes when we're out here. Like we start <laughs> saying stroller and sort of buggy. We start saying elevator and sort of lift. Yeah, we've only been here two and a bit weeks. <laughs> so around red, you also hang up lots of red decorations, red lanterns. You'll see red a lot everywhere. Yeah. Um, red signs with the word foo and like foo is the thing that's actually on my necklace, which just means like good health, good luck, like blessings, like just all the good stuff, which I wear all the year. Um, often, um, what else is red that we do? We wear red, we decorate with red. Red envelopes. Oh yes, on pal. So um, these are red envelopes. They're not just shared on Chinese New Year. They're also given out at any sort of uh, celebratory events, so weddings, births, even ashes. Yeah, I think I read that you can give them at funerals, but they're often white ones. Um, yeah, but red is the colour of, of positive celebration and so on, and they're much more associated with Chinese. Yeah. Um, so the rule, there's lots of rules around uh, giving a little yes. pal. You're supposed to hold the two hands mm-hmm. to give and receive two with two hands. hands. Um, you should only put crisp new banknotes inside them. Yeah. Shouldn't put in anything that adds to the number with the four in it. Mm. And it's better to give double notes rather than a single note. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, we put two tens in rather than just one ten. You can only give them to unmarried, uh, like, people in your family younger than you, generally, is the rules. Yeah. So all the children receive them. And now that I'm married... Yeah, she got married, now she's born. No. <laughs> <laughs> you go in with, like, a full... My dad had this, like, uh, like one of those... Brass pocket, pocket. Brass pocket his shirt. Chunky. Trunks, like, filled <laughs> with uh, umpals for everybody. And by the end, it was, like, deflated. It is. Whereas, like, it's so hard to keep track of who is an actual child child and who is older, because obviously you give them different amounts. Like, you're not going to give a toddler the same amount that you're going to give someone who's, like, 28... From my experience growing up, from my family, 
when you're young, you don't get as much. The older you get, you get more because, you know, what is a young person going to spend on the money? So anyway, Rupert got a like, healthy sum of um, £1 pound money this year. And we, we, we sat down and counted it up with him at the end because another thing you're meant to do is do not open it in mm-hmm. front of the giver. Um, you meant to obviously take your husband and he was open so it later. Sweet. Every time he got his umpa, he tried to say Gong Su oh. And then he, tried, he, um, he went with a little bag that was my handbag, ready. And then he'd run and back, put it in his bag. He'd run and put it in his bag. Yeah. And then when we got one, yeah, and then he knew. And then when we got home to the hotel, he was like, "Let's open them." We read you, and then we counted them all out on the floor. Yeah, so So he got like a good amount, um, enough to buy like new clothes for him or like some toys. So one thing he's already bought. Oh my god, I should get it. Where is it? So one of the things Rupert bought with his own pound money because he's still got some left is this. (gasps) He really wanted a lucky Chinese knocking cat thing, like Feng Shui cat. Um, and this one is made of micro Lego. Yes. Like a Lego knockoff. But like, it's great. <laughs> I don't know if it's 19, 20, 90, 20 means that's how many pieces are in it. Oh, God. We, we should also introduce, by the way, this is Gongzi. Um, Rupert, Rupert desperately needed, wanted to get a dragon as soon as we arrived. Um, thought that was very important. Yeah. Because obviously it's the dragon year. I That's why we've sat next to Jessica, who is a dragon, yes. and I have his faithful bunnies who came yes. with us. He came with us from Peter England. Peter and Cottontail. Yes. And then he named a Gongzi Gongzi. And so cute. it's very firm on that Gongzi is a girl because apparently it's a girl's name. Fair enough. One thing as well that is a big faux faux power is um, spending your child's money from their own power, which mm-hmm. we did have to do last night. Um, we did not manage to get to a cash point in time and um, we went out for a big family meal and I paid for the half of the meal and my dad paid for the other half but actually you know what, what? it got replaced immediately so yeah. by uh, my cousin that was who, extra money on top that doesn't mean yeah that. but I think it was quite like, that's obviously good fortune that so he came that's along true. gave it and immediately replaced what you took that's true then another cousin came and gave him an unpar that he didn't get which we weren't that's expecting true. yeah so, on so I think, you know, life is trying to be like that with a nut, nut, nut. But, you know, we're going to try and hand you a little, like, freebie here. Sorry about your parents, kid. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, like, more, like, the family traditions and the family meal. Um, we saw all of my extended family on Chinese New Year's Day. We all come together, which is really lovely. And some of my family, that's, like, the first time they see each other for, like, a whole year. Like, I'm like, oh, do you see each other? They're like, no, every just Chinese New Year. I'm like, oh, okay, so as much as we see everyone. Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a bit like Christmas, yeah. What was that, Yi San? Is it Yi San? Oh, uh, Yi San. Is that what it's called? I want to say it's called Yi San Well, apparently, I'm my saying yeah, it's like, it's a salad with, like, each salad thing represents something. Um, and then you all come together and you toss it with your chopsticks and it's all just like, it's very fun. Uh, and then you eat it and it's all just meant to be like long life, prosperity, good yeah. things, come to you, freshness, blah, blah, blah. Interesting fact was that my aunt told me that that is quite traditionally just a sort of Malaysian and other, I mean, other, there were some other places as well, maybe Indonesia, Southeast Asian, Southeast Asian kind of custom. And it's not really something that you see in mainland China, which I thought was interesting. I think I find it really fascinating how the Chinese culture in Malaysia has been here for so long but has stayed quite Chinese mm. but has also its own unique culture. Yeah. But then also they are um, Cantonese. Yeah, like exactly. from the region of Canton rather than uh, Mandarin. So. Yeah, I mean, in Malaysia, you have, there's, there's a few different dialects, but um, there's like Hokkien, um, and there's Cantonese and there's something else, I can't remember now where one it is. And um, you get more in like Sarawak, for instance, I think it's more Hokkien. One thing I know for sure is that the peninsula of Malaysia is it's more Cantonese Chinese. That's where my mum is from, that's where my mum's family is from. So like you say, so I think it's just like different regions of mainland China long ago ancestrally came to the different parts of Malaysia. So they brought with them probably their mm. ancestral kind of traditions. Yeah. And then we have Baba Nonya, but that's a whole thing in time. Yeah, we did a video about Baba Nonya when we came in 2018. It was really, oh. it's a really fun video that I, I was still really proud of. It's like Jessica did like some really cool stop motion. Yeah. It's all about Georgetown and Penang, which is very, um, a lot of Baba Nonya kind of customs and culture and, and architecture and so on there. So if you're interested in checking that out, it's, I think that was actually a really good video really to still check time. out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> One of my favorite things is 
obviously going to the shopping malls and being like, oh, wow, this is so beautiful and gorgeous. Yeah. What a nice little scenery that they set up here. We can take photos next to it. That is obviously delightful, and I love seeing that. Um, as does Rupert, who yesterday went up, he's like, a temple! <laughs> Let us take the photos! <laughs> and there was one place where you could get dressed in traditional Chinese garb. And yeah, like, oh. and, they had like a, and they had a photo box there, where they were like, yes. digital <laughs> photos. It was like pretty cool. There was a queue. So yeah, there was a big queue, and he desperately wanted to get dressed up as a Chinese emperor. And we were like, oh, we'll come back, oh, we'll come back, we'll come back. Absolutely not going back. Um, but also, the lion dances and the dragon dance are just stunning. It's amazing. It's a complete feat. It's artistry. It is, How yeah. they manage to do it blows my mind. In, remember, it's like 34 degrees here. Yes. And it's so humid. And they're, they're dressed up. Outside. They're dressed up in heavy these heavy up. outfits, like, with, like, trousers and tops on underneath. Firstly, the dragon dance. Yeah. So, yesterday we went to go and see a dragon dance and a lion dance, and the dragon dance was first, and they move so quickly they're using so many muscles all at once at one point they were all lying on the floor doing sit-ups just repeatedly back and forth back and forth so that this dragon wiggled in the air yeah and it looks if you're just looking at the dragon you're like oh it's so light and, yeah. and easy and then you look at the men you're like what a lot of work yeah Absolutely and they gotta make sure they keep at the same set distance obviously the dragon's yeah. gonna rip it off and like... it's, it's made of such a light material as well that they don't want to tear the yeah thing. And um, it, just the way that they make that movement so beautiful. Well, it's nice that you appreciated the and dragon then, dance so much. I'm always just like, get on with the actual lion dance. No, really? <laughs> yeah. I but the dragon dance I should I should point out at this point we were standing in 34 degree heat, yes, surrounded by you people <laughs> in, in a crowd with. They didn't mention this bit. Rupert on my shoulders, and he was wearing a bag which was like flapping <laughs> against my face, and he was like gripping onto me for like because he was probably yeah, feeling a little bit anxious. Bit terrified. And I was like, oh, I'm so. I think he was more terrified of being on your shoulders than he was of the actual dragon dance. Well, he wanted to see though at the same time. He yeah. wasn't terrified. I did ask him, and you're right. He was like, yeah. Back to this year, um, Chinese customs as well, which I think everyone gets to celebrate and enjoy. And I think that's what's really nice is because there's a strong Chinese ethnic group in Malaysia, um, even though it's Malay is considered the national language and Islam is considered the, you know, main, the national um, main religion, main religion um, they all kind of come together and celebrate Chinese New Year. Like all the shopping malls will have the decorations up. Um, they all have like big, they, like all the big malls have like um, main displays that people would like to take photos at. And like you can see that there's all different people of different faiths, faiths like enjoying the decorations and, yeah. and, and people still say Gongzi Fat Choi even if they are not themselves Chinese. Yeah, it was um, really nice as you're seeing like yesterday we walked around the big mall. It was really lovely seeing people like families where the women were wearing hijabs but they were all still wearing red. Yeah. So they were like, Yeah, we want some luck. Yeah. That would be great. Well when we were staying in Langkawi there was a lovely um, uh, waitress there who remembered us miraculously from last year. Mm -hmm. And my dad was like, we well, are quite memorable, I guess. But, like, <laughs> but she later told us it was because she loves Jessica's style. And then she told, she was wearing, um, when, the last day we were leaving, which was like marking the first kind of week of trying to do year, she was wearing like a, a bit similar to mine, like a uh, traditional Malay batik, which is this this design, but with a um, chong sam, cut which is a traditional kind of Chinese style of dress um with like and with like pearl beads and things and I mm. we complimented her on it and then she said she designed it and made it herself and she makes one every year for Chinese New Year. And I thought it was really nice because she was Malay, not Chinese, and yet she was embracing the the celebration um and like working it into her own culture with like the no, with the so. Malay boutique and I thought it was really nice all how, how Malaysia is much, very much a blending of cultures and traditions and they all seem to really respect each other on that front um, which is really nice. Thank you so much for watching our first video uh, coming from Malaysia. Um, next up we have videos all about traveling with a toddler so ask below any questions you have uh, that you'd like to know about what it's like traveling with a little a person. A long haul 12 hour flight. Long haul flights or dealing with a young one when they're in a country that is very unfamiliar to them. We've also got a video that Jessica's doing about traveling in the tropics whilst yes. having a chronic illness and how to manage that and how mm -hmm. what top tips she has. 
Yes, and we are going to make a video all about learning to cook something thanks to your cousin who's a chef. So yeah. traditional Malaysian dish. Hopefully, fingers excited. crossed. If you can get us into his kitchen yeah. <laughs> um, and we're not too, you know, and like you can show us something, like that's what we're hoping to bring you guys to. <laughs> And thank you once again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Remember, you can get your own virtual private network. So all you have to do is go to surfshark.deals slash Jessica and use code Jessica for an extra three months for free. Just click the link in the description or scan this QR code now. I've been really wanting this and we probably saw an empty cup. And so we hunted this one down because someone left their rubbish in the street. Thank you.